There he goes, Warden. Bill Anderson's on the loose. Well, he fell for that escape setup, Marshal, but I don't like it. You'll like it if he leaves me the money and the rest of the gang, won't you? Well, if he doesn't, we're going to be in a jam with the law ourselves. It's a big chance we're taking, Rocky. I'm following my hunch, Warden. Mister? Sure, it's a hot day. Get aboard. Thanks a lot. My horse went lame back there. Yep. You live around here, son? Well, you're a stranger like me. Oh, I used to live around here. I've been away for a while. Huh? Yeah, I imagine you'll see some changes. Here Cedar Rock's been having his troubles. Bank robberies, outlaws. Is that so? Ordinarily, they'd come by stage. My superiors thought I'd be safer driving into town myself. Yeah, I guess so. What outfit you with, mister? I'm John Harper with the Western States Railroad. Our contact in Cedar Rock is Mr. Mason, the banker. Maybe you know him. Yeah, I know Mr. Mason. I wish you'd kind of put yourself out to be nice to Mr. Mason. You know, he's kind of sweet on you. But Uncle Nugget, it's so hard to, to pretend something you don't really feel. Maybe you still got some feelings for that bank robber, Bill Anderson. He isn't a bank robber. No one will ever convince me he ever was. Well, the law was convinced. That's why he's in prison. Listen, Marthy, I don't want to argue with you, but the ranch is really in hot water, and... Uh... And you need some cold cash. All right, I'll try to be nice to Mr. Mason. But uh, I'm afraid my looks are a little misleading. We haven't been having a very lovely time of it at the ranch. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. There, she's right. Them dang dot laws have run off all our cattle, except in a few head. Put that together with the losing of my money in the bank hold up, and it's a wonder I ain't in my grave, if I could afford one. Yes, I know what you're up against, Nugget. The robbers cleaned me out, too, remember? It's been a struggle to keep the bank going. Well, I'll be a gall-darn two-tailed bobcat. This is the first time in my life I've ever been refused a loan even before I asked for it. <laughs> Sit down, dear. If Mr. Mason can't give you some money, perhaps he can give you some helpful advice. <laughs> well, the only good thing about getting advice is you don't have to pay interest on it. Or do you? Yes, I know advice is cheap. But uh, bear in mind, you haven't only yourself to think about. Being president of the local Cattlemen's Association, you have an influence over all the other members. <laughs> I get it. 
I should go to the poor house and then rent out its rooms to all my friends. No, but you should advise them to take the offer of the Consolidated Real Estate Company. $200 an acre is a big price these days. Two, uh, listen, we ain't a selling our land to no consolidated skin flints, especially when we got sense enough to know why they want our ranches. Why do they want them? Because the railroad's coming through here, that's why. I happen to know they got a man by the name of Harper on his way here right now. Shucks, I only wanted a few bucks to tide me over. The same old pipe dream about the railroad coming here. Why, they could run their branch line through any one of a half dozen different towns. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. But if it does come through here, we're going to get a fortune for our ranches. So we're going to keep right on dreaming our pipe dreams. And you can put that in your old corn cob and choke on it. Come on, Marthy. Now, be nice to Mr. Mason, Martha. Oh, you ought to know better than even listen to me. Thought I raised you to have better sense. Don't worry, we'll manage. Suppose I'll have to go to the blacksmith and the others and stall them off again. They won't mind. They know you. I'll meet you at the buckboard in an hour or so. All right, then. All right, son. You sure can't drive you on into town. No, this is fine, Mr. Harper. I'm supposed to meet a fellow right around here. Thanks a lot for the ride. Yeah. the Harper deal that much easier. We got another read on the town schedule for this morning. Good, that'll soften him up. Come in. Mr. Harper's here. Harper, already? He's a day ahead of time. Anybody else see him? Nobody here. Ask him to wait a minute. That means we've got to take care of him right now. What about that raid? The other boys can handle it. You two wait outside. Come in, Mr. Harper. How are you, Mr. Mason? Fine, fine. Sit down. Thank you. You got here a little sooner than I expected. Yes, I made a little faster trip than I planned. When the railroad comes through, it'll make it still faster. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Did you just get in? I mean, you came directly to the bank. Oh, yes, I came right here. I'd like to meet with those ranchers I'm to deal with as soon as possible. Naturally, I want to make the best deals I can. Although, confidentially, we're planning on a big junction here. I'll have to settle with the ranchers for whatever they want. Six, seven hundred dollars an acre, if necessary. I see. All right, Mr. Harper. But first, I'd like to have you meet a couple of friends of mine. Fine, glad to. Come in. Mr. Harper, the Western States Railroad. Uh, he hasn't gotten around to showing me his credentials as yet, but uh, maybe you'd like to show him yours. I didn't know you, Mr. Harper. I got a horse out in back for you. We're going for a little ride. Don't worry about your rig. It's been taken care of. What are you trying to do? You'll never get away with this. Now, just worry about that. Let's go.
Anderson. I thought you were in prison. I was in prison. But I broke out to settle with a man who put me there. Now look, Bill, getting tough with me isn't going to make things easier for you. How tough I get depends entirely on you. What do you mean? I don't quite follow you. I'll tell you what I mean, exactly what I mean. You're going over to Sheriff Blake with me and tell him exactly what happened here the night of the robbery. You're going to tell him that the reason I was here was because you sent for me so you could frame me, because I was cutting you out with Martha. That's the most ridiculous... Shut up. You'll tell Blake I didn't keep you covered while the bandits were in the bank. When I went after him, I was chasing them, not riding away with them. You said practically the same thing in the trial, and they didn't believe you. Maybe so. I don't know what I said. I was so mixed up. Besides, I knew nobody would take my word against Mr. Mason, the big banker, everybody's friend. That's right, and they won't believe you now. Why should I conspire to rob my own bank? Why not? There was $100,000 of the rancher's money stolen, wasn't there? Now, look, Bill, put that gun away, and let's talk this over. I don't want any more of your talk. Get your hand out of that drawer, I'll shoot it out. Maybe I ought to shoot you anyway. Well, much obliged, stranger. I thought I heard it's all right. Get the sheriff. Shall I tell him that Just it's... tell him to get over here quick. Yes, sir. You know, you got me out of a tough spot. Well, sir, I don't like to see people get hurt. If it had been the other way around and you'd had your gun on him, I would have done the same thing. Only he happens to be an escaped convict. I don't believe I know your name. Do you live around here? No, sir, I don't. My name's Rocky Lane. I just drifted into town looking for work. Rocky Lane? Well, maybe I could help you find some. Uh, did you happen to hear what this fellow was saying? He's afraid you might have heard the truth about him. No, I didn't hear much of anything. I happened to glance in the window as I was passing by. No hard feelings, friend, but uh, if you are an escaped convict... Sure, I escaped to try and get myself a square deal, and I might have if you'd minded your own business. Hello, Henry. Your clerk? Bill Anderson. I thought he was in prison. He escaped and came here to kill me. That's a lie. I was trying to make him tell the truth about the robbery. This man will tell you what he saw, Sheriff. Your words are good enough, Henry. You better come along peaceably, Anderson. You know, I'll use this if I have to. Well, that takes care of that. <laughs> have a cigar? No, thanks. I don't use them. Well, maybe I have a couple of friends that do. <laughs> They're quite good. I'm all right, because I'm not. I don't blame you. I was a little worried myself. Naturally, I, I don't know how to thank you. Where did you come from, anyway? I was standing just outside the bank when your horses broke loose. My name's Rocky Lane. 
I'm Martha Clark. I'm glad to know you. Well, I... I guess I better be getting back into town. My uncle will be worried sick. If you don't mind, I'll ride back with you. I wish you would. Can you handle them all right? Sure. Bank robber and bandits. You gotta be a gall darn outlaw to make a living around here. I don't know how you feel, but personally, uh... Marthy, where you been? I couldn't imagine what happened to you. The horses ran away during the shooting. They'd still be running if it weren't for Mr. Lane here. My uncle, Nugget Clark. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Clark. Not as glad as I am, son. Thanks. Thanks a million, that's all I can say. Oh, hello, Mr. Mason. I'd like you to meet Rocky Lane. I've already met Mr. Lane. He saved my life when Bill Anderson tried to kill me. Bill? But Bill did... He escaped from prison, and now he's escaped from the sheriff. I hear he's heading toward the South Hills. Sure got a desperate character on the loose. Ain't there nobody going after him? The sheriff was shot during the raid. Bill wouldn't hurt anybody. People have just... just given him a bad name. I'm afraid he's earned it, Martha. Oh, dirt! I wish we had some protection against the Andersons and the gunmen. Now, if we had a few young fellas like Lee... See, you wouldn't be needing a job, would you? Well, uh... Yes, I guess I could use one. Then you got one, by cracky. Of course, I wouldn't be able to pay you right off. Well, let me take a couple hours to think it over, though, Mr. Clark. Right now, there's something I want to do. Sure, sure. Our ranch is straight out the town road, just beyond the fort. See you. Maybe he'll be able to help me keep my pipe dream of going a while longer. How's that corn cob of yours a-smoking? Well, I haven't choked on it yet. Give it time. the heavy artillery. Bill Anderson broke out of prison and came here to kill me. He got away during the raid. I can put a couple of men on his trail to see he don't get away. Good. And have them watch the Clark place. He'll probably show up there to see Martha. And there may be another fellow there I wouldn't miss either. A cowboy named Lane. Lane? What's he done? Uh, nothing in particular, except that he overheard Anderson shooting off his mouth about the robbery, and he may have heard too much, and I can't afford to take a chance. We'll take care of both of them. How does, uh... Mr. Harper looked to you. Good, good. All right, you know what the deal is. Come into town with Harper's rig and register at the hotel and start seeing the ranchers I told you about. All right, but this one thing that's got me a little worried. What about this Harper? Is there any chance of his getting loose? Harper will never be loose again. You play for keeps, don't you? I'm playing for big money. The railroads are going to develop this whole district around here. What happened when the railroad company misses Harper? He just disappeared. Nobody knows what happened to him. They'll have to send someone else out here to buy the properties, and by that time, I'll own them. Yeah. Sounds all right. All you have to do is end the pipe dream of these ranchers once and for all, and I suppose we get started. He's my best Anderson, Mr. Lane.
Bill. I'm so glad to see you. And I'm glad to see you, Martha. Oh, you look more wonderful than ever. I heard about you being in town, and I've been so worried about you. That's only Uncle Nugget. He's taking his after-supper snooze. He'll be dead to the world for an hour or two. Have you had anything to eat? I'll bet you're starved. Well, I am a little hungry, I guess. Come on in, I'll get you something. Don't worry about Uncle Nugget. Nothing will wake him up. So dangerous for you to be in Cedar Rock, Bill. Don't you think you should go back? Back to that prison? I'm never going back. Not till I've settled with Henry Mason. Make him tell everybody I'm not a bank robber. I never believed you were. I know it. That's why it's so important to clear myself. I'd have settled with Mason this afternoon if it hadn't been for a fellow named Lane. Rocky Lane? Mm -hmm. Well, he's just a cowhand. And why does he keep trailing me, hounding me? He's lucky I didn't have a gun a few hours ago. Stand and deliver, Bill Anderson. Hands up. And you too, Henry Mason. Ha! I'm gonna wake out all the snakes for one bullet. The poor dear. He's so worried about the ranch, he has nightmares all the time. Come on and finish. Fine. Well, thanks, Martha. I sure was hungry. Have another glass of milk. Thanks, I will. Put up your hands. Looks like my nightmares are coming true. Now, wait a minute. Listen. I ain't listening to no jailbirds and bank robbers. He isn't a bank robber. If he were, Cedar Rock is the last place he would have come when he escaped. Yeah. Maybe it'd be the first place he'd come. Mason said he tried to kill him. That's not true. I was trying to make Mason clear me of the robbery and pay back the money he stole from you and the other ranchers. Maybe I did lose my head and cock the gun, but I wouldn't have really shot him. There's no proof of that. All I got is your word. Now, give me some time and I'll prove it. I believe in him, Uncle Nugget, and I wish you would, too. Well, I want to. Lord knows I could use that money. Yeah, and I'd gotten it for you this afternoon if that fellow Lane hadn't butted in. He better stay away from me. I knew him before he went to Penn. He's probably that guy Lane Mason wants. See if Anderson shows up, then we can get them both. I wonder who that could be. Maybe it's the sheriff. Maybe it's Lane. If it is, I'll simmer down, you two. I'll see who it is and send him away. Mr. Lane. Good evening. I'll settle this for good right now. No, Bill, please. Please don't, for our sake. I, uh, I thought it over and decided to take that job you offered me. Yeah? Well, you see, I really don't need no cow hands right now. As a, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I'm fresh out of cows. Is that so? Well, I was kind of counting on that job. You changed your mind in a hurry, didn't you? Well, I ain't got a very big mind, so it don't take much time to change it. <laughs> By the way, have you seen that fellow Bill Anderson that escaped from the sheriff? Bill Anderson? Why should he come here? There's no telling where he might show up. That's eh, a comfy little home you got. Yeah. Too bad you ain't got a home to go to. <laughs> this is a fine picture of George Washington. You know, he went a long way because he wouldn't tell a lie. He even got to be president. Well, I sort of gave up the idea of being president some time back. It's getting late, young fella. Time for me to turn in. Then I guess I better be on my way. <laughs> oh, uh, you mind if I get a drink of water? Uh, you stay right here. I'll, I'll get your drink of water for you. Anderson, 
do. Come on. Anderson? All right, so you got me. What are you hunting me for anyway? If you'll listen to me, I'll try to tell you. I mean, I... Stop worrying, Marthy. Lee won't hurt Bill. He will... Mr. Clark, has Bill Anderson come back here? I want the truth this time. United States Marshal. So that's it. We haven't seen Bill, not since you left. Then I suppose you're after him because he escaped from prison, huh? The warden and I let him escape. We were hoping he'd lead us to the others involved in the robbery. Bill wasn't involved in the robbery. I can tell you that. And I come around to feeling the same way, Miss Martha. I overheard Bill talking to Mason at the bank. And tonight, a couple of gunmen tried to kill us both. A couple of gunmen? But what happened to Bill? He's all right, he got away. I don't know who these men were, but I found something very interesting on one of them. 
This man had an imported cigar in his pocket, just like a couple Mason gave to me. Maybe there's a reason for Mason to want Bill out of the way. But why you? He probably figures I overheard him and Bill talking about the robbery. Then why don't you arrest Henry Mason right now? Not enough evidence, Miss Martha. Mason's word is just as good as Bill's. That's why I wanted Bill safe in jail, so I could pretend I was working here and see what I could uncover. Then why don't you go right ahead and pretend? Camp here just like you planned to. Thank you. Maybe I will. That'd give me a chance to explain things to Bill if he shows up. That's right. Well, good night, Marshal. Good night, Marthy. Good night. Don't know who he is. Looks like a city fella. I remember. I'm just a ranch hand working for you. Yes? Mr. Clark? Yes, sir. How do you do? My name is John Harper. Oh, Mr. Harper. I'm from the Denver office of the Western States Railroad. <laughs> We've been expecting you, Mr. Harper. Uh, meet my niece, Martha. How do you do, Miss Clark? How do you do? And my new hand, Rocky Lane. Glad to know you, Lane. How are you? Uh, step right in, Mr. Harper. Step right in. Sit down. Just to uh, make yourself right at home. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Clark, I saw some of the other ranchers. They tell me you're head of their association. Anything you say goes. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Harper, so you can go right ahead. Go as far as you like. Well, as you may have heard, the railroad would like to run a branch through this district. And to do so, we'd have to acquire certain properties. Now we're willing to go as high as $100 an acre for them. $100 an acre? You mean that's what you're offering for our ranches? That's right, Mr. Clark. That's all we can offer. A hundred? Well, Marthy, we can get 200 from that real estate outfit that Mason represents. Well, that's right. If you can do that, Mr. Clark, I'd advise you to take it. After all, the railroad can run its track through any one of the towns around here. So this is the end of my dream. My dream of getting a nest egg big enough for me to retire and to set Marthy upright. Never mind, Nugget. Oh, no. Hundred. See, maybe we should see Mason right away quick before he changes his mind. Well, maybe we should. Do you mind if I go along? I'd like to make certain that that offer you're talking about is bona fide. You're not accusing Mr. Clark of misrepresenting, are you? Certainly not. But I have to make a report to my company. Well, that's only natural. Let's go. I think I'll go along with you. There's something strange about this whole deal. What do you mean, strange? I can't tell you. Just don't let on to Mason that we suspect him. I don't want him to be pulling in his horns. I don't care what he pulls in so long as it ain't his pocketbook. I'm going to stop this fooling around. I've got to sell my property. Henry, thought I'd drop in and bury the hatchet. 
especially if I could get a few dollars on it first. <laughs> well, it was nice to see you folks. Uh, won't you sit down? Uh, you know my hand, Rocky Lane, and I guess you know Mr. Harper from the railroad. Yes, I met Mr. Harper when he came in here to see about getting in touch with you ranchers. He got in touch with us, all right. And he sure ended our pipe dream, as you call it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but business is business. Is it true, Mr. Mason, that you offered them $200 an acre for the properties? I didn't offer it. The Consolidated Realty Company that I represent made the offer. However, I understand they're withdrawing it tomorrow. Well, I'm sorry to see my company lose out on the deal. But like I told Mr. Clark, he and his friends should certainly accept your offer. It's twice as much as the railroad company can pay. I hate to do it, but I reckon you better start getting the papers ready, Henry. I feel like I'm selling Martha out of house and home for practically nothing. You're not going to sell Martha out of anything. This is another one of Mason's frauds. And that man there, there's something you ought to know about him, too. He's a phony. I happen to know because... Ow! You didn't have to do that. You want him to kill somebody else like he tried to kill me? Well, I'll take him over to jail. See that he gets there this time. Come on, Anderson. Well, I don't know what it's all about, but you folks certainly have a lot of excitement around here. I'll be glad to get back to Denver. Guess I'll go for the hotel and pack. It's been nice knowing you, Mr. Harper. Have a good trip. Goodbye. Well, we'd better get down to business, Nugget. I've had an agreement drawn up between the realty company and the ranchers. They've given you power of attorney so you can sign for all of them. Uh-huh. And on the bottom line, then. Okay, here goes nothing. Wait a minute, Nugget. Maybe you should have another talk with the ranchers first. But Martha, I told you, you won't have until tomorrow. Tomorrow's another day. Martha's right. I ain't gonna be stampeded into nothing. Come on, Marthy. Forbes, get Peters over here right away. Sure, this isn't the same Mr. Harper who picked you up on the road. I'm positive, Marshal. This fellow's wearing the same clothes, but he ain't the same John Harper who gave me the ride. Then what happened to the real Mr. Harper? We're going to have a talk with this fellow when he gets back to the hotel. You hide over there where you can watch the entrance of the hotel. I've got something I want to do. Be right back. Bill. He not only called Lane Marshall, but evidently the kid got a ride into town with Harper. I thought Anderson suspected something about you. That's why I tried to brain him. Too bad you didn't. You shouldn't have let him go out with Lane. Well, I couldn't help it. I figured on taking care of Lane and Anderson after I got Clark signed up. You gotta handle Lane right now. He's waiting over at the hotel to see me. You gotta get him off my neck. I got away get him off all our necks. It ties right in with my plan to break down Clark. Get going, do what I told you. Now you go back to the hotel and talk to Lane. Stall him as long as you can. And then tell our clever marshal that you taking this fellow to jail? I'll assume full responsibility for his being out. What can I do for you, Marshal? You can tell me what happened to John Harper, the real John Harper. 
I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. It just so happens Anderson here hits to ride outside of town with the real Mr. Harper. That's right. Well, I've got credentials to prove that I'm Harper. Stolen from him just like the clothes you're wearing. You've only got a jailbird's word for that. Maybe so. But I saw you trying to swindle Nugget and the rest of the ranchers. Trying to make them think the railroad wouldn't pay them so much for their land as Mason would. I only offered them what the railroad instructed me to. Mm -hmm. Suppose I told you I'd telegraph the railroad to find out what they are offering and any other details they have on Mr. John Harper. Fine. It'll take a little time for the wire to get back. Not too long. Now we'll just sit here and wait until the answer comes. time we got that wire, isn't it? It'll be here before long. Then we'll get the lowdown on Mr. Harper. All right. So I'm not Harper. You can find out the truth sooner or later anyway. What happened to Harper? I don't know. I don't know anything about his abduction or the abduction that Mason's gone in for now. What abduction are you talking about? Well, Mason was going to have his men pick up Clark and his niece. What for Nugget? And why? What for? He's going to force Nugget to sell himself and the ranchers out. After that, I don't know what'll happen. Why didn't you tell us this before? Why is he telling it now? Because I was afraid you might think I had a hand in it. I might go in for a little swindling, but murder's something else. Mason knows he can't get away with this. Mason's a pretty ruthless man, especially when he's after a fortune. Remember, nobody's seen Harper. Maybe if you'd agree to help me out in court, I might be able to give you a little more help. Go on. Well, I happen to know where Clark and his niece are being held. It's the same place they held me when I was waiting for Harper. You've been telling so many lies all along, I don't know whether to believe you or not. But I'm going to find out for myself. Come on, Bill. You too. Jackson took in our clever marshal. Supposing Jackson comes in with him? He won't. He knows what to do. After we finish with Lane and Anderson, then I'll uh, take care of my business with the clocks. Hurry down. That's it. Get out of there. Guarded. All you have to do is go in and untie them. I'll wait here. I think you'll come along and help us. But I've kept my part of it. You haven't fooled me at all. Bill, you stay outside in case somebody shows up. <laughs> Open it. 
upset. Never mind him, get lame. <laughs> So worried about Nugget. Free country. Worry if want it. Well, not about your money, I hope. Remember, you're going to get it all back now that Henry Mason confessed everything. Yeah, it ain't that. Well, you couldn't be worrying about Miss Martha and Bill. Because when I get back and tell the authorities what's happened here, they'll release Bill right away. Well, it ain't that. Well, it can't be about the railroad. You know they'll buy the ranch and for big money. That's just it. Why should I sell? If the railroad comes through, there'll be a big boom on here. I'm going to keep my ranch and get in on it. <laughs> well, the railroad can't come through here if you don't sell. Yeah, that's right. So now I ain't got a worry in the world. <laughs> and it's all your fault! <laughs> so long. Good luck. Bye, Martha. So long, Ronnie. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> 